So here we are. We were back inside of a truck, man. Had a whole new company doing a whole new type of division. Flatbed, that's where we at. What I'm gonna do in this video, man, I'm just gonna talk to y'all about, you know, how I ended up in this seat, man. How the orientation process happened, all that, man. So let's get into it, man. So the first thing you wanna do, if you can tell I'm reading my notes right here so I don't forget nothing. But uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna fill out an application with them. I went to their website, maverick.com, and uh, just put in like a little, it's like a little simple application type deal that they got on there. Just ask for your name, your email address, I think you ask for your address and all that where you live at. Then they ask you, do you have any experience driving trucks? Yes or no? Cause I put yes and uh, submitted it. And I can't remember when they did it, but I think, I don't know if it was the same day or maybe the next day or whatever. But after I submitted that, also, also you gotta put your phone number down too. Uh, after I submitted it, they sent me a text message with a link uh, for me to click on that link so I can fill out the uh, the whole application of the full application. So I did that, I filled out the whole application, I sent it in and then I waited. Now you can't call them directly, you know, as soon as you get done filling out the application and go, and then you'll talk to a recruiter, then they'll go over the whole application process with you. But I decided to wait because, you know, I already had a job and all that. And uh, plus, I wasn't too sure if I wanted to do flatbed or not. So I figured, you know, if it's meant to be, then they'll call me. I think it maybe took about a, a week or something like that uh, for them to call me back. And the guy I talked to, the recruiter I talked to, his name was Jeff. Real cool guy. He, uh, I never got to meet him. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with that part later on in, the, in this video. But uh, when he called you, what they're going to do is that they're just going to go over that application that you filled out. That's what they're going to do. You know it's very important that if you have anything in your background that you let them know. You know, I am not an attorney or anything like that, but you might want to, you know, let them know of any things that you got. I ain't going to really say what it is, but if you got anything in your background, man, you might want to let them know because they do, they do a very thorough uh, background check. And my recruiter, Jeff, he did tell me, he was like, yeah, do you have any felonies? I told him no. He was like, you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm sure. I ain't got no felonies, man. <laughs> And he was like, okay, because, you know, the way we do things here, man, we find out that you got a felony and you didn't tell us, then, you know, that's it, yo. The whole hiring process is going to come to an end right then and there. They won't move forward with it. So you might want to chop it up with them, let them know and all that. You know, it's always good to be honest if you can. So after all that was done, he um, submitted it. Um, probably took, I don't know, about 40 minutes or so to go through the whole application process. After he did that, he submitted that over there to Maverick and he said they, they'd do a background check. I asked him how long it'll take. He said it'll take probably about, I don't know, about four days or so, maybe a week. You know, if it falls on a Friday or Thursday or Friday or something like that, you know, you probably won't hear back until that following Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever. I forget when I called, but it probably took about four or five days for them to get back to me with uh, with their decision. And uh, of course, you know, everything was good. They said, okay, yeah, we want to move forward with the hiring process. And the next step after that, of course, you know, is a drop. You know, you gotta take a drop test. And at Maverick, and a lot of these mega carriers, man, they all doing the same thing. They want you to do a urine, and they want you to do a hair follicle. Now look, you know, I, I know some of y'all might have an issue with the hair follicle thing, you know, but that's what they do here. You know, it's really no getting around it. Um, no, it's, I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's really up to you. It's up to you what you want, want to do with your life, man. You know, I don't smoke, so it's not an issue for me. But if you do that kind of thing, man, you got to you gotta decide what you want to do, man, for real. You know, that's just how things are moving nowadays. You know, they do the urine, and they even said themselves, man. Maverick, they, they, you know, they had a lot of people come in here do the urine. They passed that. But then when they start doing the hair follicle, a lot of people fail. and They can't hire you. You know, so it, it, that's why they do that, man. I, I know, but I'm not going to get too deep into it, but just... Look, if you want to better your life, then you got to do what you got to do. It's just simple as that, man. Only person that's going to make your life better is you. Nobody else going to do it for you. You know, that's why I'm glad I don't do the, the smoking thing. I don't have problems with smokers or nothing like that. I'm just really trying to touch on and let y'all know, man, because you know, that's just what it is, man. You know, that, that stuff ain't legal federally. You know, and even if it was legal federally, you know, just like with alcohol, it's legal all over the place. It's legal federally, it's legal locally and all that. You know, a lot of companies don't want you drinking in the truck. And if you do, they're going to fire you. And I'm pretty sure that even if they were to legalize, you know, marijuana, more than likely companies still don't want you smoking in it. So, you know, it's just what it is, man. But like I said, if you want to better your life, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You know, they'll schedule your drop at your earliest, at the earliest convenience. You know, I think for me, uh, the background check came back. Everything was good. Maybe a Tuesday. Then they scheduled me for that Friday to take the, you know, take the drop. And, uh, you know, it's at the closest location. You know, wherever you live at, they set it up there. You know, for me, it was at Concentral. So that's why I went and got it. 
you know, I went there, I did that, and uh, they took hair from my underarms. You know, since they, you know, do the urine and the hair follicle, they take, they take that from my underarms. You can wear deodorant. You know, they said that that don't uh, affect it in any kind of way. So after your results come back, and that might take about three days or so for your results to come back. After they come back clean, you know, Jeff, he had called me up. He told me, okay, yeah, everything is good on our end. So, you know, next step after that is uh, orientation. When do you want to start? And I asked him, I was like, okay, well, when's your next, you know, orientation date? And he said, well, the next one coming up is three weeks from, from now. At the time when I, you know, did the thing, it was three weeks away. So he said, that's July 21st. So I said, okay, cool, I could do that. So he's like, okay, cool. So after that, um, I went on here and put, put in my two week notice at a laser spot, you know, cause I, like I said, I was still working for them. I wanted to make sure that I can get this job first before I quit, you know, where I was already working at. So since they went on here with the, you know, since I passed everything and, you know, I went on and put my two week notice in. And yeah, I am gonna drop a video on laser spot. I know I'm pretty sure some of y'all might wanna, you know, know how things were over there. And what made me decide to go over there, I'll talk about all that in a later video. So next move after that was um, after they, he told me when the next orientation day to be, he asked me, how do I want to get there? Now, I think, now I do know that you can, uh, they'll rent you a car, you know, they'll pay for that. Um, I think they'll bus you out there. If you don't, you know, don't want to rent a car, you want to take a bus, they'll do that. It might be Greyhound, I don't know. And uh, I think they might even fly you out there. I ain't too sure, don't quote me on that. But I know they, they offered me, do I want to rent a car or, or I think take the bus or whatever. And, or do I want to drive my personal vehicle? You can do that. You know, uh, I thought about renting a car. Then I said, no, nah, I don't want to stay in Chicago any longer than I need to. So I said, I'm going to drive my, my vehicle out there because I can't leave it in Chicago anyway. So I told him I'd drive it. He's like, okay, cool. If you do drive it, we'll reimburse you. It's $105. That's what they'll reimburse you. You don't need no receipts or nothing like that. Um, they'll show up on your next check, so it won't, they won't give it to you as soon as you get there. It'll just show up on your, your first check as soon as you get it and all that. And I did get my first check with, with this company already, and yes, that $105 was on there. So that's, that's what they do. So after everything was confirmed with Jeff, uh, he then later on that day sent me an email. And in that email, it had the hotel information. It had when they wanted me to arrive, like because it, it, the orientation date is July 21st. But they wanted me to get there at least a day early or something like that, July 20th. You know, they wanted me there by 5 p.m. checking into the hotel and all that. So uh, that's and they also had in that email what to bring with you and all this other stuff. So make sure you read that email thoroughly so you know what to bring so you ain't forget nothing and all this other stuff. So of course the location I attended to that I was gonna go to is in Little Rock, Arkansas. That's where I'm at right now. Um, they got terminals all over the place. They got I think they got one in, in Indiana, like Portage, Indiana. They got one down there in Madison. They got, I think, one in North Carolina. You know, they got quite a few, quite a few terminals. But I sent, but they sent me out here to uh, Little Rock, which is cool with me. You know, it's about 650 miles away from Chicago, from where I live at. And um, I actually left out um, on a Thursday. So after my two week notice when my job was over with, I had like that whole week to chill. Um, and on Thursday, July 18th, I think it was, that's when I left Chicago and made my way down here to Little Rock. So yeah, I left a few days early. No, I didn't need to do that, but I wanted to. So that's what I did. And I also got here a day early. I got here on Friday instead of Saturday. I called first. I called them and I asked them like, yeah, can I get here, you know, a day early or whatever? And they, they, they said, yeah, you know, so that's what you could do that. Let's see where else, where we at next? Uh, you know, they do call you, um, once everything during those during that three weeks while I was waiting to to get there, um, they did call at least once a week to make sure I was still gonna show up. You know, if I had any questions or anything like that, I could ask them right then and there. Um, you know, if you schedule to show up on a certain date or whatever, and you can't make it for whatever reason, you need to call them, let them know. You know, if you change your mind, you decide you don't want to do this, then once again, you got to call them, let them know. You know, don't leave them hanging, you know, because that could be bad. Cause if you ever decide you want to come back here, you know, they might not put you in the system because you, you know, you didn't communicate. You know, that's the thing with this company. Communication is very, very key here. You know, they always want you to call and, and if you got questions, talk to somebody. You know, they're not going to hang up the phone on you. They ain't going to get mad or nothing like that. You know, you just got to, you got to be in com constant communication over here. You know, that's the thing. That's not a problem with me. You know, so that's why when they called, I told them if I can get there a day early, they said, yeah, you know, it don't hurt to ask. So that's what I did. And they, they said, yeah, you can get there a day early. All right. So let's talk about this hotel. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So 
No, uh, Maverick pays for the hotel, of course. You know, if you rented a car, you drive a car, your rented car to, to the hotel. Um, if you took a plane or whatever, um, I think a shuttle bus will pick you up, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, like I said, I didn't go that route, but I, I think a shuttle bus will pick you up from the airport. I think it's the same thing. If you took the bus, you'll get picked up. But if you drove your personal vehicle, if you drove a rented car, then you just drive straight to the hotel. Uh, I checked in a day early, like I said. It was on Friday, July 19th So when I checked in and uh, went into the hotel lobby. <laughs> I, I'm not going <laughs> to... I'm just going to put it to you like this, man. I appreciate that Maverick is willing to pay for the hotel room. Um, I mean, it's not the nicest hotel. <laughs> but, but I mean, they try. You know, the, the, the hotel staff, you know, they you know, they can be kind of rude a little bit, you know, depending on the city. I, look, I, I know it's a lot of people that come through there, you know, and I, it's a lot of people with different personalities and, and, you know, people want certain things and all this other stuff. You know, it can get overwhelming for the staff that work at that hotel. Because like I said, when I got there, they kind of kind of had an attitude a little bit, but I didn't I didn't take it personal. You know, it, just, it is what it is, man. You know, so when you go there, you know, just go there knowing that you're there to learn. You you just stand in a hotel just to, to get some sleep, and that's it. You know, so uh, you go there and you be like, oh, man, this this hotel, because I've seen that with a lot of other companies. People complain about the hotels and all that, saying they dirty and, they, and all this other stuff. I mean, this hotel, it, it wasn't dirty, but you could tell it, it was, you know, it was a little outdated. You know, it, that's just what it is. Um... But like I said, it was a free place to sleep. That's that's all that matters, man. It's a free place to sleep. So when I got there, I put, parked my car. They got plenty of parking and all that. Checked in. Uh, my room was up on the third floor. I think most people, they rooms are up on the third floor. Most people that come to Maverick. Uh, there were a few people on the second floor, too. But uh, on the third floor, I went up there, opened up the room. The room was clean. You know, it smelled good in there and everything like that. You know, there are two beds in there, twin beds in there. Uh, there's a desk in there, there's a TV in there, you know the regular stuff you find at any other hotel. Now I know some of y'all might be questioning, do you get a roommate? Yeah, more than likely you're going to end up with a roommate. Um, if you're a guy, it's gonna, you're going to be paired up with another guy. If you're a female, you'll be paired up with another female. Uh, some people had their own rooms, you know, so if, they, if that was them, then lucky them. But more than likely you're going to get paired up with somebody, man. So if you're the type of person that don't really like um, dealing with roommates and all that, yeah I, uh, yeah, I don't think you can be able to come to Maverick, you know, because, I mean, yeah, I know if you balling like that, you could probably go get your own hotel room and all that. But see, the problem is that they don't want us driving our personal vehicles to the terminal. You know, they they want everybody to take a shuttle, take the van, the shuttle van. I'm going to talk about that van in a minute. But they want everybody to do that. That's what they want. So if you got money like that and you don't want to stay with a room, man, you want to get your own hotel room, I guess you could do that. You just have to chop it up with your recruiter and let them know. But me... I ain't paying for another hotel room. I'm like, man, they gonna pay for it, then that's just what it is. I'm just gonna have to deal with a roommate. So, um, it did. that's just what it is, man. You know, if you're lucky enough to get a room by yourself, then cool. The next day, when my roommate did show up, he a cool guy from Texas. You know, he did snore. So that, you know, it's, it's, I can't sleep when somebody snores, but I just had to make the best of it. So that's just what it is, man. Uh, let's see, what else, what else, what else? So yeah, so that, that's pretty much it right there, man. You know, from the time that you make the phone call or uh, send in that application with Maverick until the time you actually get, get to the hotel room, maybe a month. You know, because like I said, the way they schedule um, their orientation, I, they have orientation every week as far as I know, but you have to be fit in. And like I said, it took three weeks for me to get in there. So that, that's just something to, to be aware of. So if you already got a job or whatever and you really want to come here, don't quit your job until you know for certain that, you know, you could come here. And also know this, just because they're doing orientation, just because they invite you out to, for a hotel room and all this other stuff, you don't have a job yet. You know, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with that in the next part, but you ain't got a job yet. So just understand that. So let's move on to the second part of this video.
Man, it's hot outside today, man. It's about it's 100 degrees out here, man. But it's even hotter in that truck. That's why I came outside. I figured, let me go on there, go, come outside. It's a nice day outside. Sun is shining, light breeze. I know I ain't getting bitten by no mosquitoes, though, so that's good. But let's go ahead and finish this out right quick. All right, so uh, <clears throat> we on the second part. This is the part where I talk about, you know, going to orientation, you know, actually coming here to the terminal. Um, if you haven't noticed, Mavericks, orientation dates they always start on a sunday you know since mine was july 21st and of course that's a sunday um uh, and it starts at six o'clock in the morning it goes from 6 a.m to about 4 p.m sometimes it could go on a little longer sometimes you can go to 4 30 i think i think there was one day where we stayed in class at 4 30 so from 6 to 4 30. um but sunday let's see so in that email that they sent that i talked that i talked about earlier they tell us that they want us in the hotel lobby sunday morning at 5 30. that's what so you got to get up probably say five o'clock in the morning 5 15 something like that and uh they want you down the hotel lobby by 5 30. that way you know everybody can hop in the van and um uh, take the, the you know the shuttle to the terminal the uh terminal itself is about like a mile from the hotel you know you'll know it when you see it because the hotel itself is located around a whole bunch of truck stops and all that i think it's exit one 56 or exit 157 on i-40 so you'll see a bunch of truck stops you see a pilot over there there's a loves on the other side of the highway there's a petrol over there you know it's, it's a very busy area lots of trucks over there so when you get in the shuttle van the van will take you you know to the terminal you know you go through a gate there's a one way in and one way out and uh you go through that gate and they pull up to the training building and let you off now the van themselves, let me talk about these vans right quick, man. So they got three of them, you know, but I think we only can use one. So one van will come back and forth and pick up people. The vans themselves can hold about nine people or so in there. Okay, you got to make multiple trips. Uh, my class, I think, consisted of what? About 25 people in my class when I came in on that day. And everybody pretty much stayed in the hotel. Uh, the vans will pick you up. It would, it would take you from the hotel to the terminal. And at the end of the day, it'll take you from the terminal back to the hotel. So it do that every day. Every day that you're in training, even when you go for low securement training, it'll training, do that too. Um, and yeah, somebody, we have to be the ones to drive the van, the students. You know, none of the instructors drive the van. You know, everyone take turns. You know, some of one of the instructors are asked at the end of the day, you know, who wants to drive the van? You know, <laughs> and they always seem to have issues, you know, with getting people to volunteer to drive that damn van because no one don't want to drive that van man because usually if you get the keys for that day man it's, it's, it can be a bit of a hassle because the thing is that those vans since we can't if you didn't bring a personal vehicle then if you want to go to walmart or something like that if you want to go to the store or anything like that you got to use them vans to do it now that's the only way it's going to work and usually what they do is that they want us to shuttle other people you know you get like a group like a carpool and have everyone go you know, to Walmart all at once, whoever need to go there or whatever. You know, if you're lucky enough to be the only person to go to Walmart, then, you know, that day, then there you go. Um, I even heard someone say that sometimes they may want you to pick people up from the from the airport. So, no, yeah, that's that'll be fine. But for the most part, man, that's that's really on your, your only way, you know, around in this area, unless you brought your own personal vehicle. Now, the thing is, like I said, they don't want us driving our personal vehicles here to the terminal. Not until after training is over with. Once training is over with and you get officially hired and they assign you a truck then and only then can you uh drive your personal vehicle here to a terminal and leave it here so they don't you know they don't force nobody to drive the van they just ask you know who wants to drive the van you know and people quiet and no one wants to say anything eventually someone raised their hand like yeah i drive it um you know it's funny because the instructors mentioned it was like <laughs> it was like we give you the keys to a hundred and sixty thousand dollar truck but no one wants to drive a $10,000 van. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but it's true, man. No one wanted to drive that van. You know, I did drive it. I drove it one day. It was a Thursday or whatever. You know, and, and it was pretty easy when I drove it. But like I said, some people, you know, they got a lot of running around to do it. And I mean, once they give you the keys, you got the keys for that day. So you drive the van that day from the uh, terminal to the hotel, then you have to drive people back to the terminal in the morning. So that's how they do it. Then you get the keys back to the instructor, then you know, they have somebody else do it. You know, like I said, you could take it to Walmart or anything like that. You could take it to restaurants if you want to go as a group, 
you know, y'all want to go to, you know, um, a Denny's or IHOP or something like that and get you something to eat as a group, you know, you could do that. You know, they ask that we don't take it to no restaurants that serve alcohol, like Hooters, you know, uh, or any bars or anything like that. You know, you don't want to take that because the van's got the name Maverick on the side of it. So if somebody drive past and they see them vans, you know, at a place, a restaurant that serves alcohol, they're going to take a picture of it. And then they already know who got the keys. And then, yeah, you're going to have to explain yourself. So but other than that, you know, the vans are there. If you want to use it. You know, you can. They got other vehicles, too. But like I said, I don't think you can use them vehicles until you get hired onto the company. So that's um, so that's that. But if you got your own personal vehicle, then, yeah, you can go wherever you want. You know, after after class is over with, you want to go to Walmart, do that. You can keep stay out as long as you want. You know, it don't really matter. You no, know, but if you drive the van, they want the vans back by 8 p.m. So, you know, that's that's how that works. That's how that works. Uh, so, yeah, that's the situation with the van. I, I just wanted to touch on that just so y'all have an understanding about how that works. Uh, so let's move on. So um, when you get to the terminal Sunday morning, you know, that's like the, the, the introduction day. Um, <clears throat> make sure you bring the stuff that they tell you to bring in that email. Of course, your driver's license. If, if you already got a driver's license, they want you to bring that. Um, your medical card, your social security passport, you know, things like that. Uh, your direct deposit information. If you rent it a car, I, I think you take the, I, think no I, I can't remember how that worked because like i said i didn't rent a car but you know either way if you rent a car i don't know if you leave the car at the hotel and you just bring the keys and then when you get to the class and you hand the keys to the instructor i don't know how that worked. you can talk to a recruiter if you want to know how that worked but uh just bring everything that they tell you to bring in that email you know of course bring some clothes gotta bring you know change of clothes you might want to bring some laundry detergent some bleach and stuff like that you know because they do have a washing machine at the uh at the hotel they also got one here at the terminal that you can use if you want. Uh, when we got there on Sunday, they split us up into two groups. The first group were people who did not have a CDL. So yeah, Maverick is a training company. They will train you if you don't have a CDL. So they split them up. They went to one classroom. And then my group was a group that had a CDL already. You know, it didn't matter if you had experience or not. As long as you had a CDL, then you were part of that group. And since I already had my CDL, then I was a part of that group. Um, like I said, it was about 25 of us in the group. And um, once I went into that classroom <clears throat> with the people that had CDLs, um, it was only three, well, no, it was five of us. Five of us total that actually had experience. So out of 25 people in that class, only five of us had uh, experience, me and four other guys. So most of the people that come to Maverick don't have no experience. They don't have no trucking experience or nothing like that. My roommate, uh, he didn't have, he had his CDL, but he had no experience. You know, I think he worked on uh, forklifts and, and things like that before he decided to get his CDL. So you can't do that if you want. Uh, from what I was told, if you don't have no experience and you have to come here and get your CDL through this company, it's not cheap. Uh, from what I was told, you got to sign a 16th, a 16 month contract. Um, I don't know what it costs, but I, I, I'm pretty sure it ain't cheap. Um, you're going to be here for at least about five weeks training. And I know that because some of the people I talked to said they were here that long. They've been here five weeks. You know, so yeah, that's five weeks going back to that hotel. That's five weeks sharing a room with a roommate if they still here. You know, that's five weeks getting picked up and dropped off in the van and stuff like that. So yeah, you, yeah, it's, it's, it's a minute. <clears throat> you're going to have to deal with this for a while. You know, I'm just putting it out there just in case some of y'all watch this video and you ain't got no experience. I'm just trying to give y'all heads up so y'all know what to expect. I don't want nobody to come out here thinking one thing, because here's the thing, the recruiters, they won't lie to you. They will not lie to you, man. They 100% they legit. When they tell you what this company is about, they're not lying. That's exactly what the company is about. But I, I figure I'll just tell y'all firsthand since I, I, I'm here, since I, I came here. Now, of course, I, like I said, I didn't go through the, through the whole trying to get my CDL and all that, because I already got it. But just based on what I was told, some of the people I talked to, yeah, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna be here for about five weeks. And then once those five weeks are over with, then that's when you move on to, uh, you know, securement training, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, let's see what else. Once you finish with your five weeks, um, and after you finish with the securement training and things like that, that's when you go out with a, a trainer. Now this only applies to people who don't have no experience driving the truck. If you got less than six months of experience, or if you got no experience, then yeah, you gotta go out with a trainer. 
If you got more than six months, you ain't got to go out with a trainer. You know, I ain't trying to toot my own horn or nothing like that, but I got seven years. I've been driving trucks for, since 2016. You know, from 2016 to 2023, I took a year off, but I, that, they don't count that. <clears throat> so I didn't have to go out with a trainer. You know, as soon as my load securement was over with, they gave me a truck. That's what this camera's sitting on top of the trailer and all that. They gave me a truck and all that. They gave me a trailer. So I just had to hit the road. You know, and that, that could be a good or bad thing, depending on how you look at it, because, you know, I don't know nothing. You know, the people that go out with a trainer, at least they got somebody to actually know what they're doing. They could show them the ropes and, you know, how to, you know, secure loads and tarp and do all this other stuff. Me, all I got, all I had was just the trainer inside the little building over there. That's it. So, you know, a lot of what I got to learn, I got to learn on my own. You know, I mean, you got social media and all that, and that'll help you out a lot. But for the most part, I got to learn all this on my own, but it's cool. You know, like I said, me knowing how to drive trucks for so many years, you know, it, 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 it'll work out. I ain't even worried about it. You know, but either way, man, if you, it's, it's a long process, man. That's, the thing is that it's, it's probably a good idea to have some money coming out here, too. Because like I said, they, you're not hired in yet. You know, uh, you come in for orientation on, on, on Sunday, and, uh, and if you can pass everything, then Thursday will be your official hire date. That's when they will officially hire you into the company on Thursday. You know, so, but until that date, you're not hired in. So, I mean, yeah, you're getting paid. They do pay you. They pay, um, the pay for the people with experience is quite a bit more than those without. I'm not going to say what the pay is, but uh, those who don't have any experience, they get paid a certain amount. Those with experience also get paid a certain amount. The ones with experience, they do get paid more. Um, if you come in here for training and you have to get your CDL and all that, I don't think they pay you at all. Don't quote me on that called your recruiter and I had to change batteries out. All right, so where was I? Yeah, like I said, man, call your recruiter. If you got any questions on, on that, that way they, they can better explain it to you than, than I can, because like I said, I didn't go through it. <clears throat> so that's that. Uh, yeah, if you already got experience though, I mean, it just, it's so much easier because it's only two weeks. You know, the first week of orientation, the second week of uh, low securement, and that's it. Then they put you out here and get you a truck. You know, I don't know what the, well, I don't know what, what it's like being out there with a trainer. I mean, you gotta understand if you knew at truck driving, um, you're gonna go out with a trainer. And I know, cause there were women that came here. They don't really have a whole lot of female flatbed drivers here. Um, so more likely if you're a female, you probably gonna end up getting a male, a guy to train with. I know I was talking to a, a, a lady, a young lady in there. She went out with a male truck driver. <laughs> I mean, he was, from what she told me, he was cool. It's just that he had an issue. I'm not gonna say what that issue is, but she said he had an issue. So, and she had to deal with that for three weeks. Three weeks. That's how long she was out with a trainer. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it just what you gotta deal with, man. I mean, you sharing a truck with somebody, man. You know, everybody do things different, the way people run and, and all this other stuff. So, you know, you just gotta deal with it. I know I had to when I when I first you know got into trucking back in 2016. I went out with a trainer. You know, you just got to deal with it, man. Just try to make the best of it. Just understand you there to learn. You know, if, if this really interests you, then you could just get through it. You know, just listen to what he's saying and, and do all this other stuff, and you you'll make it out. Uh, let's see. So uh, <clears throat> the instructors. You know, I'm gonna just put it like this, man. The, the instructors at Ma at Maverick are some of the best instructors that I've ever heard in my life, man. Like the way that they teach, how good they teach, you know, they're very thorough. They, they are very well spoken. They really make sure that you understand, you know, what it is you got to do. You know, Sunday, you know, it being the first day of a class or whatever, it, it was a boring day. You know, they, they instructors came in, they talked to us and everything else like that. And then, then it was time to watch a bunch of videos and sign a whole bunch of paperwork and all this other stuff. You know, it's just what it is. You know, the buildings itself, they have several buildings around here. You know, very clean. This whole lot is very clean. It's, it's, it's big. It's got plenty of room to move around. You know, it's, it's very well organized here. They got a walking track. I don't know if y'all seen at the beginning of this first part, I showed a little bit of, of that. They got a walking track <clears throat> right there. You could walk around and all that. You know, they do feed us. They give us two meals a day. They give us breakfast, which starts around 6, 6.30, something like that. And that's about 30 minutes. Uh, graphics and then they give us um, lunch from 11 to 12 so it's an hour lunch good food you know it's pretty good you know i'm not gonna complain on the food you know very tasty but you can't leave the premises 
So once you're here, you gotta stay here until it's time to go. So if you get hungry, you know, they got vending machines and, and stuff like that. You know, they got pop, but you gotta pay for that. You know, me only had the meal that they gave us. I barely went to the vending machine, so that way I could save some money. But uh, yeah, so yeah, like I said, Sunday is, is just introduction. You know, uh, very boring day. You know, filling out a whole lot of paperwork and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with that. So Sunday, just make sure you bring all your documents they tell you to bring. And uh, if you do forget, cause there were some people that didn't have all their stuff and you know, usually they tell us as long as you have it in by Wednesday, then you good. One lady, uh, this one woman, she uh, didn't have a social security card. So I don't know what she did, but she had it shipped from somewhere and they they brought it here to the terminal. They had it uh, e uh, post office here to the terminal mail here. I mean, so I guess you could do that, but just try to bring all your stuff, try to come prepared so you ain't gotta go through all that. So Monday, so Sunday was, like I said, an introduction day and then Monday. Monday is abilities test, you know, physical strength and all that. Uh, you gotta take another drop. Yes, you gotta, you gotta do that again. You know, it's just a urine sample, so you ain't gotta worry about you no know, hair follicle or nothing like that. And then they take your picture, so you can get a badge. That badge is what you use to get in it through the gate, cause like I said, there's only one way in and one way out. Use that to get in the gate. They also got some, the driver lounge over there, you need a badge to get in there. So that's who you need a badge for. Uh, <clears throat> after that, you go upstairs. There's this really nice lady up there. And uh, from there, she uh, take your blood pressure. You know, she asks you of any medical issues that you might have or anything like that. And then she have you stand stand up at the at the at the table, and she have you do like some some little physical tests, like stand on one leg and and move your calf muscles up and down. Some some type of way that she did. She also had this little grip thing that you squeeze with your hand, test your hand strength. And uh, once all that's done, then you go over to this guy who's also in the room, and he will have you do even more abilities tests. He what he has you do is a lot of dexterity type stuff. You know, he'll have you do, um, like, move your leg uh, up and down, spin your wrist around and, and all of here, touch your fingers, how, how your fingers are. You know, if you do have any type of issues, any joint pain or anything like that, usually them tests that he do, yeah, it'll show up there. So, he also test your neck, how far you can move your neck back and forth and side to side and stuff like that. You know, so they have a range that you got to fall under. If you fall within that range, then you're good. If, if not and you know more than likely they're gonna have to send you home so you know they because this is flatbed it's a lot of moving around it's a lot of picking up heavy stuff climbing on top of trailers and all that you know it's a lot of moves here you know you can get hurt pretty bad out here if you're not flexible enough so after those tests are done you got more tests to do you know you'll go into another room where they have you do some squats you know they have you lay on the table and do various stretches and stuff like that on the table they also have you step up and down on a box to a rhythm and I ain't gonna lie that was fun I, I liked it that you know and then they have you pick up some weights and put those weights down inside of a box they take have you take it out one box and put in another box there's a certain way that you got to do it they'll tell you all this once you get in there but uh, just you know just making sure that you could do the job you know if you have any pain any back pain or anything like that then you know they want to make sure that you know it don't affect you once you come out here and by that time you will be tired like they they really go through it you know, with all the people that were in the class, it probably took about three hours, maybe three and a half hours, something like that, to get everything done. You know, and then once that's finished, then you'll go down into the training bays. And then from there, they have you climb on top of these flatbed trailers. They want to make sure you always use three points of contact. That's very important. You know, if you don't do it, one mess up. Just you mess up one time, they'll fail you. And then once that happens, that's it. There are no do-overs. They send you home. So they have you climb on top of the trailers. They have you climb on top of uh, a box. It's like a, a box that's about 13 feet high. Um, so if you're scared of heights, then you, know, you might want to try to get over your fear of heights. You know, me, I had no problem climbing on top of the trail. I had no problem climbing on top of that box. They did say there was one guy, he was, he was scared of heights. He couldn't do it, so they sent him home. Uh, once that's done, then they have you go outside. There's a truck sitting out there, and then they will have you climb in and out of the cab. Once again, three points of contact. Everything that you do with climbing on stuff has to have three points of contact. They have you climb inside the truck, three points of contact, then they have you get out the truck. You know, you face it, you don't turn around and jump down. You jump down, you fail. You know, they want you doing three points of contact at all times. So get out, do three points, and then they have you open up the hood of the truck, 
They want you doing it from the front. You can put one leg on the bumper and, you know, pull the, the hood down so you can get it open. You know, they want you doing that. Then you close it back and all that. And then once you do all that, <clears throat> that's when the lady, she'll hand you an envelope. It's a white envelope. It'll have your name on it. And I'm serious when I say this. Inside that envelope is a Uno card. A Uno. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it's a Uno card in there. And it'll be either one of two colors. It'll either be a green one or a red one. Okay, it have a number on it too, but the number that's irrelevant. They just she just giving it to you for the for the number. I mean for the color. So if you get a green one, of course you know you pass. If you get a red one, then you know you fail. And then once that happens, they send you home. You know, like I said, there are no do-overs or anything like that. So everyone in my class passed. So we all got the green card. We was good. You know, and yes, there were some women in our group, some short ladies and, and everything else like that, and they were able to do the do the test. You know, they passed everything too. So if they could do it, then yeah, it, it's it's not hard at all. You just got to just listen to what they tell you to do. That's it. If you do that, then you'll pass. Now, Tuesday and Wednesday come. You know, I can't remember everything uh, that we did those days. But I do, I do know it was a lot of videos that we had to watch. We had to take a lot of tests. They do give us homework that we got to do and stuff like that. You know, um, that was, that's, that's the day that some one of them days, I think it was either Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember. The recruiters actually showed up. And... Uh, came to the class and introduced themselves. Remember I told you at the beginning of the video that I never met Jeff. Well, Jeff, he's in another state, so he couldn't make it, but if he was here in, in Arkansas, he would actually show up. About half the class actually had Jeff as their recruiter. So that goes to show you that he, he recruited a lot of people. Uh, but they had other recruiters there too. Uh, some people had more than one recruiter. Sometimes it may happen. You may talk to multiple recruiters and all that. <clears throat> so, you know, they show up. You know, they're real nice. You know, there's a couple of ladies that showed up. And uh, if you have any questions, you could, you know, ask them any question that you might have and all that. You know, and like I said, man, they don't lie. They, they do not lie. From what I was told, Maverick takes their recruiting very serious. Um, no, that's, that's just from what I heard. They, they take their recruiters. So it's not like some companies where the recruiters are a lie to you. They say, oh, you're going to run this many miles. You're going to make this kind of money. And then when you get here, it ain't nowhere near that. From what I heard, yeah, Maverick ain't on that. You know, if the recruiters tell you you're going to work this, you're going to run these miles, you're going to go here, you're going to go there, then that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. You know, they don't want to bring nobody here by lying to them and then realize they can't do the job because that's a, not only a waste of your time, that's also a waste of Maverick's time. You know, and they ain't about that life. So one thing I learned about this company, man, is that they very, they very well organized, very well organized. That's what I love about being here. Um, they also tell us about benefits. I think Wednesday benefits... Uh, a lady came in to give us benefits and stuff like that. You sign up for that, like medical and, and dental and all that if you want. It's up to you. They also have like retirement, 401ks and all that other stuff. So if you want to sign up for that, you can. That's your opportunity to do it right then and there. Um, also, another person showed up. I'm not going to say his name, but uh, he was he, uh, he's a very high-ranking person here at Maverick. Um, he also introduced himself. Real cool guy. You know, uh, one thing I didn't mention is that Pretty much everyone that works here, almost everyone, at least all the instructors that worked here, uh, they all drove for Maverick. They all drove for this company, you know, and then they just worked their way up the ladder, you know, until they became either an instructor or in that case of the other guy, he became like a pretty high ranking guy. So he came and introduced, told us, you know, what he expect of us and what we should expect from Maverick and everything else like that. Like this place is this place is so structured so well, man. I can't get over how well structured this place is. Y'all see, I'm over here sweating bullets, man. It's like 100 degrees outside. So Thursday hit. Thursday is the last day of orientation. Um, this is the day that you will officially be brought on as a Maverick. That's what they call people who get hired in. They call you a Maverick. And so they go over more information. You got more questions you can ask. Um, but for the most part, man, you're done. You know, Thursday, that's, that's the last day. You know, you get your uh, certificate of completion, at least for the first part. I believe, and uh, now you moving on to the second stage, which is uh, low security. Now, like I said, you do get paid for orientation for that week. You do get paid for that. Uh, if you got less than six months, you make this amount. If you get more than six months, you make more. But it's it's a flat rate. It's just what it, it's not based on hourly or anything like that. It's just a flat rate. So, got any questions? You can call the recruiter, and they give you more. And they they. Your check stub comes in on Wednesday and you get paid every Friday. So every Wednesday you get your check stub and then that following Friday is payday. Now they could do a direct deposit or, or they could put it on like this little card, I think. 
All right, so now let's move on to low securement. So one thing I also didn't mention, there are no days off. You don't get any days off. Soon as Thursday hit, you get hired on, boom, you automatically move on to low securement. And um, you get introduced to your new instructor. Um, and then you move to another classroom where they can start that whole process. You know, and that, and that training goes from that Thursday to the following Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. So it's a whole week. So like I said, no days off, you know, and then also on top of that, you got to get up earlier. You know, they want us to get up earlier. They want us downstairs by an hour early. So instead of being downstairs at 5.30, they want us down there at 4.30. So that's, the, but you also get off early. You get off, I think we got off usually around 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. You know, you will be working. You know, during that, that low securement, yeah, they will work your ass. You know, and, and starting in the summertime like I did, yeah, the, the heat and all that, they give you plenty of water and stuff to drink. You know, but you, you really got to, if you find yourself getting dizzy or anything like that, just let the your instructor know that you're not feeling well, then you could take a breather or something, go get you some water, something like that. You know, so, but they, they will definitely work you because it's a lot, it's a lot that they go over, man, in this one week, a lot. You know, so, and it's all basic stuff. I mean, once you go out into the real world, you know, things are a little bit different, but they, they basically teach you enough for you to understand how to do the job and how to do the job safe. You know, Maverick's motto is, is safety while risky. You know, you watch a lot of videos, you watch a lot of PDFs. You know, they show um, some pretty graphic images of, of people that got injured on the job doing, you know, just not being safe enough. You know, they jumping off trailers, breaking their ankles. You know, they winching down, they using a winch bar to tighten up some, but they standing over the winch bar and then it flips up and hit them in the mouth, knock their teeth out and all that. Now they show some pretty graphic stuff. They even show one where one guy got killed. They showed it. Like they, they just showed everything. It's graphic. I'm telling you. So if you squeamish or you don't like that kind of stuff, then yeah, cover your eyes or something, man. But yeah, they really want us to, to show what could happen if you're not careful out here. You know, I mean, this flatbed is not like regular drive-in or reefer. Yeah, dri doing drive-in and reefer is dangerous too. Don't get it twisted. But at least you're not climbing on top of the trailer like that. You know, someone else load the product. Someone else unload the product. You know it's inside of a box trailer. You barely have to climb in and out. But with flatbed, there's a lot of climbing on top of this trailer. You know, there's really nothing up here to, to keep you from falling off. Then you got trip hazards. You got the chains that you got put down. You got the straps you got put down. You got the tarps. You know, the tarps ain't, ain't light. You know, the, the eight foot tarps, some things weigh 100 pounds. And you get two of them. So yeah, man, it, it's, it can be serious, man. It can be real serious out here. You know, I'm one of those people, yes, I do take safety very serious, very serious. I ain't trying to get hurt. You know, I've heard stories of, tr of drivers falling off the trailers, falling off flatbed trailers, off the load and all that, breaking their legs, breaking their hips, breaking their back, you know? And if that happens, man, it's over with. You know, it's over with. You know, you got to eat right too, man. I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to eat healthy. You know, that's another reason why I, well, I talk about that in another video. <clears throat> but, you know, eating healthy and all that, that's, that's very important to me. I want to try to stay as healthy as I can and, uh, you know, staying hydrated and stuff like that. You know, that way I could do my job, my job a little bit more effectively. You know, um, you know, the instructors won't send you out here until they know that you could do the job. You know, they don't mind staying late, you know, to, to try to help you. Cause there were, I think there was one or two people that stayed late after class because they just need a little bit more understanding on how to do certain things. And that's cool. You know, they, they Maverick's motto is, is that if you are willing to learn, then they willing to teach you. But if you come in with an attitude like, man, I don't want to learn this, then you know, you ain't doing nothing but wasting everybody's time. You can go home. You know, some people want to just do this job just so they can get paid. You know, me, I'm not doing that for that. I'm doing this because I want to learn. You know, I find flatbed interesting. And I really want to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to do this right. The safe way. The legal way. All that. And so that's why I'm glad I came here. You know, that's the thing, man. But you, you learn a lot, man. They, they really teach you a lot in that week. They really do. But you ain't going to learn everything in a week. It, it's just not possible. And they know that. That's why they also tell you that they have a 24-hour securement line. You call that number. Any questions, any issues trying to, you know, load up a, a product that you, maybe you forgot how to do it. You know, you forgot how many straps to put down. You know, call them up. Call that 24-hour securement line. It's 24 hours. You can call any time during the night, you know, because they want to make sure that you're safe. They want to make sure that you're legal. So call that number with any questions. You know, they also have videos on the, on the tablet inside the truck that you can watch, PDF and, and different videos and stuff that you can watch so you get a refresher, so you remember how to do things. You can also go on YouTube, of course, and all that, so. And of course, they taught us how to tarp. 
you know, tarpon comes with his own set of challenges and everything like, like that. Like I said, like I said, they heavy. You know, you get 200 pound tarps and then you also get a, uh, I think it's two smaller four foot tarps. Those weigh probably around 50 pounds, so they about half the weight. So those are more manageable, but still 50 pounds is still 50 pounds, it's a lot. So, no, but they teach you everything. They teach you how to throw the tarps, you know, how to properly throw them, how to properly, you know, strap them down and everything else. Like, you ain't gonna remember this. <laughs> you're not gonna remember. Once you get out there, you're gonna, you're gonna, you ain't gonna remember. No, but like I said, at least you got a basic understanding of, of what to do and uh, how to do it. And then if you forget, just call that 24 hour line. They'll be able to walk you through it. Another thing is that Maverick, they are force dispatch, meaning that when they send you a load, you gotta run it. If you refuse it, then you terminate it. So they have zero tolerance for that. So if there's a load that you don't like doing, then tough luck. You know, it just it just comes with it. If there are places you don't like to go, tough luck. You know, if you don't like it, I mean, they can't make you take it, but they also ain't gonna keep you here. So that's what that is. So they, they also told us that. They made sure that we understood that, that this is force dispatch. So they send you a load, you gotta run it. No, it don't bother me, because I've worked with companies that had force dispatch, it didn't bother me. For me, that was just a learning experience. You know, you get better at stuff. The more you do it, the better you get at it. That's how I, that's how I learned. So it don't bother me. Uh, Wednesday, after all your training and stuff is done on Wednesday, you take what's called a final evaluation or final eval, that's what they call it. And uh, basically what, what it is, to sum it up, is the instructors will have a uh, station set up in the training base with different load types. And your job is to go over there. You have a piece of paper, a pen, and your job is to write down what's wrong with that, that uh, load, if anything. Some loads don't have no, nothing wrong with them. But your job is to go out there and just look and see what's wrong. How, does it have enough chains? Does it have enough uh, are the timbers you know, in the right position? Are they upright? Are they upside down? Do the, you know, make sure the narrow side is up and facing, you know, how it's supposed to be facing all that. You know, they, they do a pretty good job at making sure that you understand what, what uh, but everything is from the time that you started training up until that point, you know. I did miss one, I think it's six questions or six stations, so six questions or whatever, and I missed one, I still passed. You know, and the one that I missed, I looked right at it, I literally looked right at it, and then I just, I didn't write it down, so, you know, but I still passed. And on Thursday, once you pass that, that then Thursday, that's it, man, you, 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 you officially hired in. You know, they give you your, your, um, your fleet manager, they give you his name. Um, they give you the keys to, they, to a truck. They give you a truck number. They give you a trailer. And that's it, you graduated. You're officially a Maverick. So that's what happened to me. And uh, you know, if you want to take a few days off, you can. Cause like I said, you know, the two weeks that I've been here, I haven't taken a day off. So I took a few days off. And today is Sunday. So tomorrow will be my official start date. Uh, they give me a load where, I don't know. I have no idea where I'm going. But they'll give me a load and I'll go pick it up, pick up my first load. So there it is, man. Like I said, your mileage may, may vary. Uh, but for the most part, that's just the experience that I went through coming here. You know, I really enjoyed it, it was fun, I really liked it. You know, I, I'm not gonna sit up and, and say that other training flatbed companies don't do the same thing they do. They probably do, I don't know. You know, I mean, I, I haven't worked for them. You know, TMC, Melton, ATS, you know, maybe Prime. I think JB Hunt, JB Hunt got a flatbed division. You know, I'm pretty sure all these other companies, they got excellent flatbed training programs, but you know, I, I can't speak on them because I ain't worked there. I can only speak on Maverick, and Maverick's training program is phenomenal. Like, it's really good here, really good. You know, so I can't wait to get out there and uh, make this money, man. Make this money and, and get this, this uh, these loads set up and learn everything I can. You know, it's something different. You know, I didn't think I could do flatbed before. No, I really didn't. That's why it took me so long to get in it. You know, but I'm excited now, man. I'm, I'm excited to be back out here. Well, I, I just want to be back out here on the road. Let's, let's just put it that way. <laughs>